Today we're going to begin talking about sequences, and one type of a sequence is an arithmetic sequence. So when you put your heading on, make sure you spell it correctly. Okay, um, and I'd like you to write down the definition of a sequence. This is not the last time we're going to talk about it. It says a sequence is an ordered list of numbers that often form a pattern. Each number in the list is called a term of the sequence. So let's take a look at some examples um, of sequences and see if we can notice the pattern. All right, so if you take a look at problem letter A here, 5, 8, 11, and 14, perhaps you can um, find a pattern that will allow you to find the next um, two terms of each sequence. And so I see a pattern right away that says plus 3. It sort of confirms it here and confirms it here. So I know then that the next two terms of that sequence are going to be 17 and 20. Let's take a look at B. Okay, I look at this one and the first thing that springs to mind is that two and a half is half of five. So I think to myself times two, times two, and I prove it out throughout the four um, terms of the sequence. And then I can just use it to find the next two in the pattern. Both of these, A and B, are both sequences, but only one of them is an arithmetic sequence. This one here is an arithmetic sequence. And just for your information, this letter B, it's called a geometric sequence. Um, we're going to be focusing our attentions today on something called arithmetic sequences. But before we move on to that, I want you to try these, um, these couple problems. So pause the video and see if you can figure out what the next two terms of each sequence are. Okay. Hopefully these are the answers that you got. And if not, this might help explain um, why the next two terms are as you see them. Okay. Of these, these two are arithmetic sequences. So let's get a definition of what an arithmetic sequence is. It's the difference between consecutive terms is constant. And this difference is called the common difference. And I'd like you to write that down in your vocabulary notes as well. So let's um, decide whether each sequence is arithmetic. And if it is, what is the common difference? So in order to do this, I'm going to have to see, is there a common difference? That's plus 5, that's plus 5, that's plus 5. And the common difference in this case then is 5. All right. To get from 6 to 9 in an adding way would go plus 3, but then it doesn't work there, and it doesn't work there. So there is no common difference. This one's not an arithmetic sequence. Okay, you try these four now. To see if you can identify which ones are arithmetic sequences, and if you find one, please tell me what the common difference is. So press pause now, try these on your own, and then see if you agree with my answers. Here are my answers. <laughs> Okay, remember that you were asked to identify that common difference if you found an arithmetic sequence. All right, if you've got questions on any of this, be sure to mark it down so we can talk about it in class. Okay. We're going to discuss two different ways to portray sequences. One's called recursive and one's called explicit. And I'm going to borrow this letter B from the problem that you just did to kind of explain the difference between the two. Okay, in order to explain the difference, I think it would be helpful if we put it in a table. So I'm going to take that pattern and place it in the output of the table. So um, 7, 9, 11, 13. Okay, and the pattern's not particularly difficult. This is just exploring the way to express um, sequences in both recursive and explicit manners. So then we come to, and we, we say that A of N is equal to the nth term. So this is the first term. Um, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, or the nth term, in other words. And n then becomes the term number. So um, I would say that this is the first term number, second term, third term, and fourth term. And the recursive way of looking at this is probably, to be honest, the first way that we see things. And the first way we usually see this is that you just add two, and you're looking from the um, certain term to the next term, and how do they progress like that? And a lot of people see that first as plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, and you can see that common difference there. So the formula for this becomes that any term in the sequence that we call A of n is equal to the previous term, so we would write that as A of n minus 1, and then plus that common difference, so in this case plus 7, and that's the recursive formula. Okay, now you don't have to copy any of this down, but let's read through it, because this is just giving us another example. All right, now it's taking a different sequence, which is 7, 11, 15. You can see that it increases by 4. The common difference is 4. Um, and so basically, the value of term 1, or we, what we call A of 1, is 7. And so the value of A of 2 is whatever A of 1 was, plus 4. In other words, 11. And then the value of A of 3 
is the one that came before it, in this case a of 2, plus that common difference. So we generalize that to look like this, that any term in the sequence a of n is equal to the term that came before it, a of n minus 1, plus the common difference. Okay, so you do need to have this written down as being the recursive formula. Okay, and let's go do some practice then. Okay, taking a look at this se sequence right here, 70, 77, 84, 91, you can see that it's shown for you that the common difference is 7. Okay, so I'm going to write, filling in that formula, a of n is equal to the term before it, a of n minus 1, plus the common difference. And that's it. Okay, um, the drawback to this is that in order to find the eighth term here, you really need to know the seventh term. So if you were to find this, a of 8, we're sort of wondering, well, what the heck was a of 7? And so this is not like the only way to look at things. So you kind of have to go in, in this um, recursive way, you have to look at there's a of 4, which you were shown here, and then you kind of have to keep going and find a of 5, a of 6, a of 7, so that you can then find a of 8. Right? So in this case, um, okay, so you can see me doing the math here that a of 5 is equal to what I knew a of 4 to be plus 7, and then it becomes a of 4, or excuse me, a of 5 plus 7, and so on and so on and so on until I get my answer um, 119. All right, so I want you to try four of them. Okay, so what you want to do is you can pause this right now and try on your own, or if you're a little bit stumped, I'm going to write down the formula. I always think it's a really good idea to write down the formula a few times, and I'm going to make that D the common difference. So basically, okay, so for this first one here, okay, um, I'm going to say that A of N is equal to A of N minus 1 plus the common difference there is 6. So I'm going to say plus 6. And the other piece of information that you really need to know um, for these recursive formulas is you need to know what was A of 1. Otherwise, well, there's no way for us to go back and generate that sequence again. So you need to say A of 1 equals 3, and it needs to be part of your answer. All right, so um, here are the answers to the other ones. Okay, so when I had missed part of the directions, it said please find the ninth term of each sequence. And so um, hopefully you did not skip those directions. And so here are the answers to the ninth term of the sequence. And so the follow-up question is, is, is the recursive formula a useful way to find a value in an arithmetic sequence? Okay, and I don't know what you put, but my opinion is it's not a particularly useful way of doing it because you have to always find the one before it. So um, let's come up with a different way of looking at it and see if we can look at it that way. Okay, so just if you recall this um, original sequence that we looked at to kind of explain recursive, um, and if you remember, we kind of looked at it like this way is the recursive look, um, whereas an explicit look, I'm going to ask that you look at it this way, in that how does the A of N, whatever term it is, relate to the term number, in this case 1, like so how does 7 relate to 1 in the same way that 9 relates to 2, in the same way that 3 relates to um, or excuse me, 11 relates to um, 3. So let's take a look at a way to write this. Um, so the first term we can just rewrite as 7, okay? But then when we're looking at 9, we can really think of it in this recursive way to think of it as the term before it plus that common difference 2, okay? Which obviously then is 9. So then we can look at this one as the term before it, which we had a 7 plus 2, just with another 2 on it. So 7 plus 2 plus 2 is obviously 11. Okay, and then we look at this fourth term as 7 plus 2 plus 2 from before, that's this term right there, okay, and then just plus another 2, that common difference. So if we look at it in that way, that really helps us see is that if we had an n here, okay, um, what's common among all these green things that we've done here is that there's always a 7 plus something, okay, and what there is is there's just a certain number of 2s that we're adding together. Okay, so it's something times 2 always. And what times 2? Well, let's take a look. In this case, it's really 2 times 1. Okay, how does that relate to this? In this one, it's 2 times 2. And how does that relate to this? In this one, it's 2 times 3 is the same as 2 plus 2 plus 2. And how does that relate here? And so what we notice is, is that it's always 2 times 1 less than n. 
So we would say this. So if I asked you in this case to figure out what is the eighth term, okay, I don't need to figure out what the seventh term is to do that. I would just say, well, I know it's going to be seven plus, and I know it's going to be a bunch of twos. How many twos added together? One less than eight. So in other words, two times seven is 14 plus seven is 21. So I know 21 will be my eighth term in that sequence. So how do we write that as a general formula? And I would like you to write this down. All right, we would say, um, a of n, any term in the sequence, is equal to 7, which, as you remember, is that first term, okay, plus the common difference 2 times n minus 1. Okay, we don't have to write what the first term is because it's explicitly stated out there in the formula. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is a really key piece for you to have written down in your notes, and I want you to write it down just exactly the way they write it down with all of these descriptors here. So I want you to say that this first a of n is equal to the nth term. Okay, a of 1 is equal to the first term, and really write these things out in your notes and put a box around it so that we can use this. And let's do some practice with it. Okay, so on this one, we're talking about like a guitar that's going on sale on eBay or whatever, and here's the bid number bid number two, bid number three, and bid number four, okay? And in this case, we can see bid number one is 200, then 210, and then 220. And so hopefully you're seeing this um, arithmetic sequence with the common difference of 10, okay? So here's the general formula that I want you to copy down again. It's always helpful to like write this down before you um, do your work because it sets you up for success. It sets your reader up to know what the heck you're doing. So I'm going to say that a of n, any term in this sequence, is equal to the first term. Well, what is our first term? In this case, it's 200. Okay. And the n minus 1 always stays, n minus 1. And then in this case, what is the common difference? It's 10. Okay. So there is the explicit formula. Oops, I almost did it again. I'm also supposed to answer the question, what is the 12th bit? Okay, well, in this case, um, let's do this together on the next line. You can say that A of 12, substituting 12 in for the nth bit, is equal to 200 plus, now, n minus 1, since I now know that n is 12, n minus 1 must be 11. I'm going to multiply that by 10. So basically what they want me to do is add 110 to 200 to get my 12th bid, which is 310. Put a label on it, and you're done. Okay. So you can see how the explicit formula is helpful in that way. All right. Um, I want you to give this one a try. What I would probably do if I were you is write this out as a sequence. So let's start with 100 and then write 9825 and then write 9650 and 94.75, okay? See if you can explore the, um, from, find a couple things that you need. You need the first term and you need the common difference and see if you can answer the question. Okay. So here's the answer. There is that explicit formula that you were supposed to write out. Oops, I'm sorry, it goes all the way to there. Okay, and then it said how many rides, um, what is the value of the pass after 15 rides, and there's that value. And then question B is how many rides can be taken with a $100 pass, and that is 57. So if you've got some questions about that, put a mark in your notebook and ask me tomorrow. Let's do one last problem. Okay, now if you're given the explicit formula, um, or excuse me, if you're given a recursive formula, can you write an explicit formula from that? So I like to write out the sequence first, as you can see how they kind of relate. Um, noticing that from the recursive formula, that is the common difference, and this tells me where the sequence started. So if 19 is first, and then you add 12 to it, it's 31, and then 43. Unless if we just do one more, it's 55. All right, and there's our sequence right there. Um, so can we take that and sort of change that into the explicit formula? So um, let's see if I can do this. There's that formula I need. So I'm going to say a of n is equal to a of 1, that's that first term, 19, plus n minus 1 times that common difference, which I see to be 12. Okay? And that's it. All right, I'll see you in class tomorrow.